Well, the Bills season unfortunately came to an end in the divisional round of the playoffs against the Chiefs on Sunday. I had a bit of a hangover, a numb feeling after the game, and um, wanted to give it a couple days before I made this video. I was going to talk about some of the things that I saw the Chiefs do at the end of the game, but, you know, galloping around like a horse on the field and flipping off fans and, you know, whatever. I don't care what the fans did to you or whatever back to you. Just go to the locker room, celebrate that you won a champ or that you won the playoff game, and move on. Um, but enough of that. This is a Bills channel, not a Chiefs channel. So let's talk about the Buffalo Bills. There's been two plays I've seen talked about a lot since the game ended, and um, the first one is the fake punt. Um, a lot of people slamming McDermott about the fake punt. But at the time, I was thinking, great, our defense isn't stopping anyone. And our punter has a pulled hamstring. And it looked like he wasn't going to be able to kick very well. So, you might as well fake it. And doesn't matter if they have 75 yards to go or 30 yards to go to score. And uh, so they did fake it. And I don't. so I don't have a problem with the fake punt. I know a lot of people do. And that's your opinion. That's fine. But... What I do have a problem with was handing the ball to DeMar Hamlin. <laughs> Nothing against DeMar, but he's a safety. And we have a running back in the game in Johnson who's used to running the ball and getting extra yardage after a hit. Now you could say that maybe they weren't aligned that way. Well, align them right. Have some foresight at the start of the game to maybe put Johnson where Hamlin was. Because Hamlin doesn't play every week. Because he's the backup. Safety. He was only in the game because Taylor Rapp was injured. I don't know. I just, I would like to see the player that is known for carrying a football carry the football on that play. Well, that's my problem with, the, with it. I mean, the game two yards... Maybe Johnson can get the other three. I don't know. On from that, the other play is uh, Shakir open in the end zone. A lot of people, first of all, saying should have thrown it to Diggs. Okay, I actually might subscribe to this because I wanted him to run the clock down more at that point in the game. They um, And even if Bass would have made the field goal, at the end that would have only tied it, not given the Bills the lead, there still would have been like a minute and 46 seconds left for um, Mahomes, who the defense, again, was having trouble stopping to go down the field with Kels. And um, score, I mean, all they needed was a field goal at that point then to, to win the game. So... You know, I'm not too much on, on Bass, but I'll get to that in a minute anyway. But the, the play back to the play. Okay, so he so Josh doesn't throw it to, to Diggs because he's calculating in his head really quickly. Um and he knows that Shakir is going to be open as well. So we had two receivers open on the play. Josh wanted to get the lead, so he went to Shakir. Shakir was open. A good throw is a touchdown. The Bills take a four-point lead. And now the Chiefs have to not only go down the field, not just kick a field goal, they have to score a touchdown to win. So, again, I would have liked to run more clock off, got Diggs the ball on second down, and got closer, if not got the first downs. But Josh went for the touchdown. I can't blame him on that. I mean, who doesn't love touchdowns? Fans would have gone crazy if they would have. If he would have got it. and uh, But the problem was that they pay the team on the other side as well. And number 95, Jones, is one of their best players, uh, pushed our Pro Bowl tackle into Josh at the last second, affecting the throw and making it so that it, it was not complete to Shakir. So... 
Is it all Josh's fault? Maybe Josh could have stepped to the right one step and felt the rush coming. But again, he's calculating. Diggs is open. Shakir's open. You know, where do I want to go with the ball? And then he's got to, I mean, there's a lot going on. Is it Dawkins' fault? Because our all-pro left tackle, let's, let's keep that guy from coming. But he's one of the best defensive linemen in the game. So I'm just going to give props to the Chiefs on that one that he made the play. Okay? It was still third down on the next play. But the play wasn't made. So those are the two plays, as I see it, that people are talking about over and over again. And then, of course, the missed field goal. Now, um, wind definitely had a problem with that field goal. And maybe if the Bills played in a dome, they would have gone on to the next round or tied the game right there at least. That's two years in a row that weather has affected the game. Last year, Isaiah McKenzie came out and said the weather was a big deal against the Bengals. I'm not saying they would have won or lost because of that, but weather affected the game. This year, again, weather affects the game. Bass makes that kick inside. I'm sorry. And I saw someone else post that um, they should have made sure it was lined up in the middle of the field or to the left hash instead of the right hash so Bass wouldn't have to kick it that way. You know what? On third down, they were going for a first down. It wasn't like they were trying to run the quarterback over to take a knee to line up for a field goal or trying to, to score or get the first down. So whoever said that, forget you. Now... People that are, are sending death threats to Tyler Bass because you're a Bills fan? What? Mafia card revoked. That's not what this is about. And if it is what it's about, then take my Mafia card. I'm not going to threaten Bills players. And then I saw a video of Gabe Davis in an argument behind our bench with fans that sit behind our bench. This is the same area that Ed Oliver had a video earlier this year arguing with fans behind our home bench. The Buffalo Bills need to look at who's sitting behind our home bench and revoke their season tickets. And you can say they buy their tickets, they can say whatever they want. You know what? I know a lot of people that are on season ticket holder waiting list that are trying to get me to help them, but I have no power to help to get season tickets. These are loyal Buffalo Bills fans that would do anything to be there at the stadium to encourage our team. I want Bills fans that are going to encourage our team, not get in arguments with our fans. Revoke those season tickets. It's not, it can't be that hard to figure out who was yelling at Gabe Davis and who was yelling at Ed Oliver. You got video cameras, I hope throughout the stadium in case something happens. Um, and sending death threats to players? Come on, guys. Come on. How does that help us? How does that help Tyler Bass kick a field goal next year? How does that help anybody that's a free agent come to want to come to the team if, the, if fans are sending death threats? That, And I'm talking to the minority, very, very small minority of Bills fans that did this. Because the majority of Bills fans then stepped up and made donations in Tyler Bass's name to his charity. And what a great charity. Save cats lives? I love cats. Got a couple of them here in the house with me. That's a great charity. That's the kind of thing I know Bills Mafia is about. I'm just talking to that minority. And you know what? Now the hangover's over. Everyone in the organization, fan, front office, equipment manager, coach, player, take a second and please, please look in the mirror and see what you can do to help. Here's the biggest thing I think I could have done to help. I can't get some of the people that sit around me at games to shut up while Josh Allen's got the ball. That seems to be the time that they want to yell to, to Josh Allen to encourage him. And Josh is out there flying like a bird. And I'm out here flying like a bird. I was dropping hints the whole game while directly trying to get in a confrontation with people to please just be quiet. 
and then scream and yell as loud as I am when the other team has the ball. That's that's part of our that's part of why we go to games to be fans to support the team, and that's how we support the team that way. I think that um, my ticket person does a great job. I told her that. I sent her an email right after the game, messaging her for thanking her for all the things she did for me during the season and always able to answer any question I might have. I think game ops needs a lot of work with the Buffalo Bills. We're talking about one of the biggest playoff, playoff games ever in Buffalo. And we got two, not even four, because there are two end zones. You can play two games. Two... Girls, young girl, flag football game going on. Two teams, one game. Not the other end zone, at least, having another game going on. And the week before, they had three violinists. I'm sure these are talented violinists, but you couldn't hear them. You couldn't hear them. I could hear the trumpet in my corner. There was, I guess, accompanying them from the corner instead of out there on the field with them. I don't know what was going on there. But, and then during the season, we've had Frisbee dogs and dogs races. Other teams are having concerts at halftimes with great performers. I know the Texans had Paul Wall and a whole bunch of other performers down there at halftime. I know the Raiders have had massive concerts at halftime. And we, we got girls football. And I think that plays an effect in the game. And they're not talking about big things. But the fans basically fell asleep at halftime because there was nothing to do. It was boring. And good for those girls being out there. Let's have the girls playing football and have a show at midfield and have a fly. Why no flyover for both playoff games? And, you know, those are just things to look at. And I, I think that's important and I think it's important because that's what I did for a career for several years. Over 20 years, I was the person doing on-field events for minor league baseball and minor league hockey and indoor football and semi-pro football. And gosh darn it, we put on a better show than the Bills do at those halftimes. Music, great music selection. Timing of some of the songs. When the crowd's got to be quiet... Why are we playing music that needs to hype them up? That's just something to look at. I know we put up signs that say, you know, team at work, be quiet. Fans don't read it. We got to have somebody up there, Josh, making an announcement or doing his bird on the video board or something. I don't know. But, or this, I don't know. Just something different because those, those little signs those don't work. They don't help. And we've got too many uneducated fans in the stadium that are making too much noise at the wrong time. And um, parking lot issues. Wow. Wow. If you want fans to keep season tickets, you might want to think about how to get them out afterwards because two to three hours in the parking lot, that ain't working. What you need to do there is have a parking lot attendance with the, the strobe lights that you have in some places that aren't needed in the places where they're needed. Like there's a bend to get out and cars have to merge, have someone there to help them merge, not at the corner or not at the free where we're all driving straight out and a guy just going like this. Yeah, we know that's the way out. What we needed help was back there. Okay. So there's a rants on on just everybody look in the mirror. And I'm not I'm I'm talking about you know those front office people look in the mirror. I know that Coach McDermott's looking in the mirror. I know Brandon Bean's looking in the mirror. I know Josh Allen's looking in the mirror. Everybody look in the mirror. What can you do to make your organization better? And who knows? I mean, maybe I'm stupid. But if the crowd keeps pumped up as they were in the first half, going into the second half and keeps rolling and keeps going, who knows, that little bitty thing, those little bitty things add up.
to help. But don't say discouraging things to our players. Support our guys. I support everyone that's on the team. From McDermott to Coach Washington to even now Coach Smiley. Although, what a rough year for our special teams. But as long as they're part of the team, I support them. And I'm behind them. Every single player on the team. Every single player. I hope that some of them are going to come back. I hope a lot of them are going to come back. It's going to be hard season for Brandon Bean on our defensive side of the ball. And we need another receiver. Shakir, awesome. Diggs, must have been playing injured towards the end of the year, but awesome. Need one more. Kincaid, going to be fantastic. Knox, love him. Favorite player. But we need one more receiver. Offensive line looks fantastic. But the T-line, there's, there's hardly anybody left. Because they're all free agents, most of them. I mean, we're going to have Ed Oliver and Groot. But after that, there's not much left. Just because they're free agents. And um, love to have Leonard Floyd back. Love to have Daquan Jones back. Um, and I, I think one thing we need to lurk about, and, uh, and I'll make another video about this, is how to, to get our linebackers to be able to go longer in the season because um, we, we can't have guys coming off the couch for a playoff. And I, I love A.J. Klein, and I'm so happy that he was able to at least try to come and help, but he no Matt Milano or Terrell Bernard, and uh, we just got to find a way to get them to the postseason. And maybe it's rotating more to give them less snaps because you're talking about guys that have over 100 tackles during the year. They're going to have hard collisions. They're going to get injured. And we, we need them in the playoffs. So let's rotate them more, get, bring in another linebacker. And that's, that's just things to look at as you're looking in the mirror. So with that, it's another season in the books. Go back to some Funko Pop collecting and looking at the draft and maybe I'll do some positional videos of, you know, where we're moving forward and heading forward to with the Bills. But the most important thing is to remember, go Bills. And God loves you! And so do I!